Good day, students. Our lesson for today is on conflict theory. I'm Chachile Swalo, your lecturer for Sociology of Education, or SED 2601. As I've already mentioned, today's lesson is on conflict theory. Conflict theory is one of the three theories in your module Sociology of Education. Conflict theory is influenced by Karl Marx or Marxism. The theory maintains that human societies and groups possess a conflict of interest. They usually have disagreements, clashes, and discordance in interest are unavoidable, meaning that there will constantly be clashes or conflicts in society based on this theory. Furthermore, conflict theory or Marxism theory can be used as a lens to view or to understand some of the human problems. According to conflict theory, conflict and change are normal and inevitable in family relationships and society. In addition, conflict is necessary for growth and social change. Furthermore, conflict theory is concerned with the unequal distribution of resources, which creates hierarchies within families and society that influence the way they function. So in the 18th century or 19th century, there was an unprecedented growth of industrialization, and the economic system of capitalism became influential. As such, Marx focused his attention on the development of capitalism and he developed a strong critique of the system. The owners of capital, such as money, and assets such as factories and machinery. Those are the examples of capital. The owners of capital are known as capitalists. Wage labor from the employees who work for these owners contributes to this conflict in the sense that waste workers are also referred to as the working class since they work for the capitalists. So capitalism revolves around the issue of industrialized society and the social class system. Marxism argues that the relationship between capitalists and the working class is based on conflict because it is inherently unequal and exploitative. Capitalists and workers are dependent on each other, but they are in an unequal relationship. The inequalities are based on the Marxist argument that Workers do not have access to the means of production, for example, the factory buildings and machinery, because they belong to the capitalists who are the owners of these resources. So workers are obliged to sell their labor to an owner who extracts profit from this labor or the workers, so to say. 
Conflict theories argue that because there are inequalities, society needs to change so that a more equal society can be created. As I've already mentioned, society is based on a conflict between the workers and the owners. At the end, we have the haves and the have-nots in society. So society consists of social classes. Broadly speaking, we have the owners, we have the middle class and the working class. These social classes are often in conflict with each other because of the unequal distribution of resources in society. The next aspect is the critique of conflict theory. Now, let's delve into the critique of this particular theory. Conflict theory can be deterministic, meaning that social forces can control or determine who we are and what jobs we end up doing. For example, if you are born into a working class family, it is possible that you'll go to a working class school and end up in working class employment. It doesn't consider free will, human agency, and the ability to move to a different class position. In addition, conflict theory does not consider that schools do not reproduce social class structures. For example, some schools actively encourage learners to aspire and achieve despite their disadvantaged circumstances. This is the end of today's lesson on conflict theory. The next lesson will be on functionalism theory, which will be followed by the symbolic interagnation theory. That's the other theory in the module sociology of education. So this lesson ends here.